here is a classical life cycle of a flatworm, just like we just presented a classical life cycle of a roundworm. Cystocercosis is uh, a flatworm, uh, the disease caused from the ingestion of uh, pig meat, pork. Uh, the species is usually Tania solium, and like all flatworms, it winds up living in the human small intestine, having many uh, proglottids and a small scolex, a little sucker, which attaches to the wall of the intestine. So if you want to start here, you could imagine that these scolices wind up developing uh, ovum, ovas, eggs, which are then uh, picked up, eaten by pigs. The parasite develops in the pig. It winds up uh, sometimes uh, having oncospheres in the pig's skeletal muscle. The pork is eaten by humans. Uh, this is the infective stage. It can uh, develop then once again in the gastrointestinal system and grow these nice long uh, beef tapeworm, I'm sorry, pork tapeworms in the human. And there's the whole cycle, the asexual and the sexual stage. Now, just as though uh, the parasite in the pig doesn't limit itself to the gastrointestinal system, but obviously goes into muscles and soft tissues. Well, that could happen in humans, too. And so in cystocercosis, you can have the organisms developing in eye, brain, soft tissues, muscles, skin, in a more serious uh, form of the disease. So it's not an entirely benign, friendly little tapeworm that hangs around and keeps you from getting fat. It could be, you know, cause some, in some cases, serious tissue damage. To just uh, show you what some of these uh, scolices and uh, proglottids look like from the various species, this is the uh, classical scolex from Tania solium, the parasite that we just talked about, the pork tapeworm. And you can see here are the little segments of the uh, tapeworm, and here is the head, differentiating in kind of a sucker fashion, as we saw diagrammatically. Here is a proglottid. It's gravid, which means it's pregnant, which means it's making eggs. But if you consider the fact that there may be hundreds or thousands of these proglottids, you, ca you can understand how hundreds or thousands of eggs, which could be picked up and, you know, eaten by pigs, can uh, happen every day. The uh, Proglottid of the beef tapeworm is a little bit longer and a little bit bigger, and uh, otherwise it has the same general function and the same general uh, appearance. The uh, sometimes the species can be differentiated by virtue of what their scolex looks like. You could see that the uh, scolex of a beef tapeworm or Tania saginata well, looks a little bit different from the pork one, and that's how another way you could differentiate them as well as the uh, fact that in the, the axis of the uh, beef tapeworm is a little bit longer with respect to its width relative to the pork tapeworm. Here's a couple of the smaller tapeworms, the dwarf tapeworm from fish. And you can see here the diameter of the uh, proglottid is much greater than the length in comparison to the other two that we saw. And it's also a physically much smaller uh, worm, and the scolex doesn't have too much of a hideous differentiation like you see with uh, beef and pork. The most common uh, flatworm uh, or nematode in the United States is Hymenolepsis nana, also called a dwarf tapeworm, uh, and it is the flattest of all. So I think you could uh, say that the general a ratio of length to diameter of the proglottid is going to be a general indication of the overall length of the worm. And of course, the ones that have the greatest length will be the longest. And, you know, some of these things, if you want to go to Guinness Book or look in some of the crazy things on the Internet, you could hear that some of these worms can be up to 30 feet long. And, you know, that's, of course, always possible. Okay. Uh, so much for uh, worms. 
let's uh, talk about insects, or more specifically, arthropods. Because as you know, both class insecta, as well as class arachnida, are classes of the uh, phylum uh, arthropoda, the single largest uh, group of animals in the entire planet. Uh, the three common classes of insects which affect humans are lice, both hair, uh, head hair and pubic hair, bed bugs. These are the only ones that actually look like actual bugs, and I think I don't have to show you what a flea looks like. If you have dogs or if you have good eyes, you've probably seen them. Maybe you've even felt them. Uh, on the arachnid side of the classification, the critters that have eight legs rather than insects which have six, we have ticks, mites, and spiders. And these are all ectoparasites. They don't completely enter the body. They just uh, feed off of it. So here's our insects. We have the Pteris pubis, infecting pubic hair, looking exactly like a little miniature crab. So that's why that particular type of parasite is called crabs, whereas the uh, insects which affect body hair or head hair uh, under the genus name Pediculosis uh, don't at all have a crab-like appearance. Here are bed bugs. Uh, I don't know if you'll ever see a case of this, but of all the insects that can uh, affect you, bed bugs are the only ones that look like bugs. And of course, the fleas are something that you may see in your office or under a microscope or on your pet, uh, whether you have uh, good eyes or a nice little dissecting microscope. They have this uh, classic appearance. Um, let's go to the arachnids now. These are the classes of arthropods that have eight legs rather than the class of arthropods which have six, which are the insects. The uh, important arthropods, I'm sorry, the important arachnids to infect man are spiders, ticks, mites, and even the larva of a mite. So. If you have a dog, I don't think you would have a hard time understanding that this is a tick. Now, I told you that they have eight legs, but it looks like they have six. But if you counted very, very clearly, you would see there's really eight because you have to have eight if you're an arachnid. If you're in the larval stage uh, of some mites can infect hair follicles, and they're called demodix folliculorum because they infect hair follicles. Here is a hair coming out of a hair follicle, and slightly thicker than the hair are these little larvae of Demodex folliculorum. It's not an uncommon type of parasite. They are uh, larval mites. The most common mite to affect human skin is scabies, and this is classically what scabies look like. You'll probably never see it looking this nicely. If you do a skin scrape, you may see something that looks kind of like this, but in every case, all the arachnids have eight legs or four pairs. Here are the two spiders of most notoriety, the black widow, whose bite can be fatal. And as you know, there's a nice little red uh, violin or kind of bow tie looking uh, thing in the uh, spider's abdomen. The brown recluse may not be quite as distinctive to identify in terms of its appearance, but the bite of the brown recluse, whereas it's usually not nearly as fatal as a black widow could be, can cause a tremendous amount of tissue necrosis. So, you know, if you see, it's not unusual to have a uh, brown recluse bite uh, look something like this. Here is probably the single most common uh, ectoparasite uh, arachnid of man called scabies, causing a whole wide variety of skin conditions, which we'll deal with in the skin chapter. And here is a absolutely beautiful scanning electron microscope showing uh, the critters kind of crawling in and out of these little crevices in the skin. And like uh, we showed you in the other picture, they look exactly like mites. This is scabies. Uh, I think we'll have to end here for a while, and we'll continue on PowerPoint number 35.
in the next batch, and I thank you very much.